A personality in Al Islam who is well known, renowned, acknowledged, recognized. But as we mentioned so many times in this member, the religion of al-islam says that there's only one human being who's infallible and that is the nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam and since we find that the nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked that question to a little girl from the companions he asked her where is allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions as well asked that question to people if someone comes after that no matter who they are companion or other than companion if the nabi said it then it's not permissible for an Imam Suyuti or I or you or anyone else to have an issue with it. Another category of people when they hear that question, where is Allah, they become agitated and they become angry. They say, why would you name the topic of a discussion like that? Why would you deal with this issue in the Khutbatul Juma? The Muslims are being persecuted in Syria. The non-Muslims are coming together and they're coming up with ideas for our Somalia. So many issues are taking place with the Muslims. Why are you addressing this issue in that class tonight? And that's also a position that's not acceptable because where is Allah is an extremely important issue. Which brings us to the third category of people. Third category of Muslims are those people who don't have an idea where Allah is. A large number of Muslims, if this question was posed to them, they would give the wrong answer that goes against what the Quran established and what the Prophet brought. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they would say that Allah is everywhere. And what they mean by that, Allah is really everywhere and not explaining it. Allah is here with us and so forth and so on. And that's the wrong answer. So taking this opportunity today, because the subject is so vast, we won't be able to do justice to the subject tonight because there's so much information. We just want to address the issue here in this masjid as the first part of the presentation. What does the Quran say? Only the Quran about where Allah is. And we're only going to get through half of what the Quran says because there's so many ways that the Quran, the book of Allah, the kalam of Allah has established this issue. And then later on, inshallah, we'll deal with other aspects of the presentation. So that question, where is Allah? Where is Allah? First of all, the reason why I said that this is an important issue, ikhwani, is because Allah obviously is our ilah. And we need to worship him and we need to know what we're doing, who we're worshiping. We need to know that. Some of those kuffar of Quraysh, Mecca, they came to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they wanted to know from him, describe to us your Rabb, Ya Muhammad. Is he made out of gold? Is he made out of wood? Is he made out of silver? We want to know this God Allah that you're worshiping, the one who comes to your mind. What is he like? What is his lineage? The Nabi remained quiet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah ta'ala revealed the simple, easy, short surah that is heavy in its magnitude and its meaning. He revealed, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, lam yalid wa lam yulad, wa lam yakun lahu kufuwan ahad. No, our Allah, he's not made out of wood, gold, he's not made out of this or that, he doesn't have a lineage. He is unique and he is a samad. He's not born and he doesn't have children and no one is like unto him. This fact alone, Ummah Islam goes to show for all of us who are living in the UK, where on a daily basis the popular culture of this country is chiseling at the aqidah of our children and ourselves. The Muslim girl, the Muslim man says something like, look, I have a problem with you. The big man upstairs is going to deal with us. She didn't mean it that way, but that's something that comes off of the tongue of a person. Allah, the big man upstairs is going to deal with you. La. Friday the 13th, the Ta'weev, all of these issues that we have in our minds that go against the Aqidah as a result of being bombarded on a daily basis, it can have a person twisted and tripped up as to who Allah is and who Allah isn't, where Allah is and where Allah isn't subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the fact that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam addressed this issue who Allah is and what does he do? It's a clear indication. We have a religious responsibility to find out about these issues. 
It's not okay for our young brothers, our young sisters to be brought up saying, I have a problem with this type of subject. Another issue ikhwani, that proves this point and it is proven throughout the Quran consistently. No way is it fathomable, is it, it's not conceivable that Allah Azawajal would send down to us, as we mentioned so many times, a religion that makes everything crystal clear from the mundane affairs. How to relieve oneself, how to go to sleep, how to dress, so forth and so on. And then that same religion comes and is quiet about where Allah is, who Allah is. It's just not conceivable. It's not consistent with the hikmah that Allah has shown us clearly throughout the legislation of this religion. In the Quran, there are seven ayat, seven, shown that it's been repeated so many times. Seven ayat describing to us where Allah is in the same way that he subhanahu wa ta'ala is mustawin ala al-arsh he said in the Quran subhanahu wa ta'ala Allahu alladhi khalaqa as-samawati wal-arda wa ma baynahuma fi sittati ayamin thumma stawa ala al-arsh it is Allah your Lord Allah is the one who created the heavens and he created the earth and then he went above his throne Seven ayat mentioned that. Not one, not two, not three. Seven ayat. There's an individual who he comes and he doesn't accept that because he's too busy with politics. He wants to overthrow the government. He wants to establish his jama'at. He wants to be a politician in Islam. And as a result of that, these types of issues that are connected with aqidah, which are the fundamental issues, they are secondary. They're on the periphery. And as a result of that, people are against these issues. And they are paramount and important. Seven ayat. Ar-Rahman. al arsh stawa Allah, our Lord, Ar-Rahman who is merciful enough to give us Islam and to give us all of the blessings that we have, he is over his throne in a way that befits his majesty. If you were to ask the non-Muslim, the Christian, close your eyes and imagine your God. Many of them, some people from Africa, African Americans, they will co close their eyes and have an image of a white man, a white man with blonde hair and blue eyes sitting on a big chair and he's dangling his feet like that. Islam didn't leave this to our imagination to figure out who Allah is, where Allah is. Does he come to the earth? Is he in the stomach of a mother? Does he have a mother? Does he have... Islam didn't leave it like that for us. Seven ayat that clearly establish he's over his throne. The great scholar of Islam, Al Imam Malik, tremendous scholar of Islam. Some man came to him from the Muslims and he wanted to argue and debate how is Allah over that throne? I want to know how. Allah didn't make it your business. He made it wajib upon everybody to be here for Salatul Juma. He made it wajib for someone to stand up here and give the khutbah. He made it wajib for the lady to wear hijab. He made it wajib for us to fast in Ramadan, those who have the ability. He didn't make it the sunnah, nor did he make it wajib on anyone to try to figure out and find out the details of how he is over his throne. That's not our job. That's not our business. The man came to Imam Malik and said, tell me, how is Allah over his throne? And Imam Malik mentioned to that man, the istiwa of Allah, him being above, him going over. That's well known to the Arabs. You ask any Arab who knows this language, he's going to say it means to go up and to ascend. It is known what it means. How he did it is unknown. To believe it is wajib. And to ask about it and investigate it, that's an innovation. And Imam Malik got that from people who came before him like his Shaykh Rabi al Rai, and it's also been narrated on our mother Um Salama radiallahu anha. And as we've been mentioning over and over again in this masjid, if the companions radiallahu anhum did not engage in these types of issues and questions and discussions, then we shouldn't engage in them. We should leave them alone. It is as simple as that. The second issue about those mini ayat how do we know that Allah is over his throne and above in the heavens? There are seven ayat that repeat the same thing over and over again. That Allah is mustawin ala al-arsh. He is over his throne in a way that befits his majesty. Another way, another tariqah that we know that Allah Azawajal is above his throne is the word in Arabic which is al-fawqiyah. That ayat of the Quran and ahadith, meaning 
they describe that the Nab that Allah Azawajal is above. Ayat. He said about himself, al Kahiru Fouka Ibadi. Allah is Al Kahir. Your Abdul Kahir. I'm Abdul Kahir. From his names is he is Al Kahir, the one who is mighty. He is dominant. He said that he is Al Kahir and he is above his creation. He's above his servants. In another ayah, he described the malaika subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said about the malaika, يَخَافُونَ رَبَّهُمْ مِنْ فَوْقِهِمْ Those angels, they fear their Lord who was above them. And every Muslim knows the youngest brothers in this masjid who have their intellect, they know that the malaika are in the heavens. Right now in this Juma, something is taking place that the Nabi has told us about. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Majtama'a qawm fi bayta min buyutillah. Yatluna kitab Allah, wa yatadara sunuhu fi ma baynahum illa nazalat alayhim as sakina, wa hafathum al rahma, wa nazala fihim, wa hafathum al malaika, wa dhakarahum Allahu fi man indahum. Every time people come together in any masjid, big or small, Mecca, Medina, Bayt al Maqdis, any masjid, they read the book of Allah. And they study the book of Allah between themselves. Every time that happens, Sakina comes down upon them. The Rahmah of Allah comes down upon them. And the Malaika come down. The Malaika in the heavens, a group of them come down. In addition to all of the Malaika that are with each and every one of us already, all of the Malaika who are writing, who comes into the door already, all of the Malaika who, whatever they're doing, there are others who come down to listen to the khutbah. They don't come up, they don't come from the side, they come from the heavens. And Allah Azza is above that. Allah is above that seven heaven. So the point here is, there are so many ayat of the Quran, so many ahadith of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that describe that issue of above, al-fawqiyah. يَخَافُونَ رَبَّهُمْ مِنْ فَوْقِهِمْ They are fearful of their Lord who is above them. There is an angel who's responsible for blowing into the horn Yomul Qiyamah. Allah created him and he's looking at the throne of Allah and he's in the heavens, the Nabi said. He's looking up at the throne of Allah and he doesn't blink out of fear that he'll be commanded to blow the horn at the moment of blinking. And the ayat or the hadith said he's above. Allah is above him and he's looking at the throne of Allah. So the point here is Another way that the Quran establishes for us that Allah Azawajal is above over the seven heavens is that issue of those ayat and ahadith that say he's above, he's above. In addition to that, there are many ayat and ahadith, Quranic ayat that describe the su'ud, that the things go up to Allah. Our deeds, our actions, our dua, the malaika, Jibreel, they go up to Allah Azawajal. Allah Ta'ala mentioned in this third tariqah from the mini ayat, not one, not two, not three, from the mini ayat he mentioned in the Quran, Ta'arujul Malaika to a ruh ilahi fi yomin kana miqdaru khamsina alf sana. The angels and Jibril, they go up to Allah, they make the ascension, and they go up to Allah in a day that to your reckoning is like 5,000 years. Allah mentioned in another ayat, the su'ul, things ascending up to him. Ilayhi, yas'adu al-kalim al-tayyib, wal-amal al-salih yarfa'uhu. To Allah, the good words go up to him, and the good actions go up to him. Abdullah ibn Abbas, the companion of the Nabi who understood the Qur'an, he said about this, that the good word, it is the dhikr of Allah, it's the salat that you make. It's the dhikr that you make. It's the khutbah that you give. It's the recitation of the Quran. It's your praising Allah in any shape, form, or fashion. It goes up to Allah. And the good deeds, Abdullah ibn Abbas said, all of the fara'id that you do like this Juma, it goes up to Allah Azza wa Jal. In the hadith that was collected by Imam al-Tirmidhi, the companion Abdullah ibn Sa'ib, he said that the Prophet talked about وسلم, the time in which the sun leaves the zenith and it makes the zawal. That time in the day, that time in the life of the Muslim. The Nabi said about that time, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, innaha 
ساعتٌ تُفتَهُ أبوابُ السماء فإني أحبُ أن يسعدَ لي فيها عملُ الصالح Whenever the zenith, the sun goes past the zenith midday, he said at that time there is an hour that the heavens are opened up. The doors of the heavens are opened up. And I want my deeds and I hope that my deeds will go up to Allah at that time. So there are too many ayat. Allah said about Isa ibn Maryam sallallahu alayhi wa sallamu alayhi Ya Isa inni mutawafiq wa rafiuka ilayh Isa, I'm going to cause you to die. And that has multiple interpretations. One interpretation, I'm going to cause you to sleep, to sleep. And I'm going to raise you up to me. Too many ayah, too many ahadith. Isa, I'm going to cause you to die. And I'm going to raise you up to me. So where, where is Allah speaking about this issue when he says he's going to raise Isa ibn Maryam up to him? Salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. And if Isa ibn Maryam went up, as we believe, he's going to come back down. So all of those ayat, all of those ahadith, the fourth point. How do we know that Allah is above? All of those ayat that talk about the inzal and the tanzil and the nazul, all of those ayat that talk about things coming down, they are points and indications that Allah is above. Isa is going to come down. Allah said in the Quran, Inna fi Laylatul Qadr. We revealed this book and send it down in Laylatul Qadr. We send down the iron where people make guns or whatever and knives. With that iron, there's a lot of harm that can come through it. A lot of power and might comes from that art, from that iron. The ayah said, We sent it down. وَنَزَلْنَا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً فَأَخْرَجْنَا بِهِ وَنَزَلْنَا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً مُبَارَكًا فَانْبَتْنَا بِهِ جَنَّاتًا وَحَبِّ الْحَصِيرٍ We send down that rain from the sky and it's blessed. And as a result of that, the vegetation comes up. It's not okay and it's not acceptable for Muslims to come and debate about these issues. And people want to debate you about that, Ya Abdullah. The answer is the same answer of Al-Imam Malik. If he wants to debate you, if he doesn't like it, if he has a problem with it, you tell the individual, I know my religion. I don't have any problems with what these ayahs are saying. You go look for someone who's on what you're on and debate him. From the sunnah of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam concerning that rain, which comes from the heavens, doesn't come from below. That rain from his sunnah is he used to send his stuff out in the rain to get the barakah of the rain. They asked him, Ya Rasulullah. Why do you put your stuff out in the rain? Why do you put your weapons of war? Why do you put your saddle that you ride on your horse or your camel? Why do you put your sword, your spear, your shield? Why do you put your hat, your imam? Why do you put it out in the rain to get it wet? He told the people because the rain just came down recently from my Lord. Your child, when it starts raining, take your child outside and do the buttock of the rain and put the rain on the head of your child. Doesn't mean to leave him out there in the torrential storm, but when it first starts raining, there's barak in that rain. Why? Because the Nabi said, it just came recently from my Lord. The rain comes from above, and Allah is above that. He told us, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam, and people being people who have ulu al-himma, إِذَا سَأَلْتُمُ اللَّهَ فَاسْأَلُوهُ الْفِرْدَوْسِ فَإِنَّهُ في وسد الجنة وأعلى الجنة وفوقه عرش الرحمن وتفجر منه أنهار الجنة. When you people make du'a and when you make du'a, naturally you're going to raise your hands like this to make du'a to Allah. So even from the fitra, this issue has been planted in the seed of Bani Adam. It's when his mind gets corrupted, he starts to have these debates and these doubts. He said, when you people make dua to Allah, ask Allah, ask Allah for the Jannatul Firdaus. He said, because the Jannatul Firdaus, wherever it is, above, above, he said that that Jannatul Firdaus, it's okay, Shaykh. He said that the Jannatul Firdaus, it is in the middle of Al Jannah. And it is the highest part of Al Jannah. And above the Jannatul Firdaus is the throne of Allah. 
So these heavens that we have, this is part of our Iman. These earths, the earths, the seven earths that we know about. There are some people who will come to you and argue and say, no, they're not seven earths. We're, oh, we only know one earth. There are seven earths and there are seven heavens. Above that seventh heaven, the Jannah al firdaus And above that is the throne of Allah. One hadith said that the roof of the Jannah, the highest Jannah, the roof of that is the throne of Allah. And those ayats that we mentioned, those seven ayat, they establish that Allah Azza wa is over his arsh. And it's not for you and not for me to imagine how, when, and why. Don't close your eyes and be like the non-Muslims, the kuffar, and picture a man sitting there because he is not the big man in the sky. The Muslim didn't mean it that way. That wasn't what they meant. I'm sure that's not what they meant. But that type of description of Allah is not okay. Ikhwani, concerning this issue about where Allah Azza wa is, even the kuffar of the Quran knew this issue. And it's not acceptable for Muslims to be in doubt about this. And then we hung on to weak, weak arguments. Al-Imam al-Suyuti, are you bigger than Al-Imam al-Suyuti? That's not a delil and that's knowledge, not knowledge in Islam. Al-Imam al-Nawi, Al-Imam al-Nawi said that it doesn't mean what you're saying. That's not knowledge in Al-Islam. Because although, again, we respect those two scholars and other than them, the companions are greater than them. And the ones who came after the companions were greater than them. And the one who came after those who came after the companions are greater than them. And even during their time, there were people who were bigger than them who didn't take that position. So in our religion, the argument is not Sheikh so-and-so said, and this method, that's not the delil and that's not knowledge. Concerning those ayat that establish where Allah Azza wa is, and I want you people to really consider this, is what happened with Fir'aun. Musa gave da'wah to Fir'aun. And clearly Musa being the kalim of Allah, a special prophet and messenger from the five prophets and messengers, you can rest assured he didn't leave any stone unturned in terms of giving da'wah to Fir'aun. Allah Ta'ala mentioned something that Fir'aun said to Musa about where Allah is. He mentioned waqala Fir'aun, Ya Haman, ibni li sarhan la'alli ablug al-asbab, asbab al-samawat, fa'attali'u ila ilah Musa, wa inni la'adhunnuhu kathiba. How is it possible? That Fir'aun who was born as a kafir, he's an imam of kufr, he's going to get a tremendous punishment yawm al qiyamah and yet, after hearing the da'wah of Musa, Fir'aun said to his minister, Haman, hey Haman, build for me a tower and make it go in the sky because I want to climb up the tower and I want to have a look at this god of Musa. But I think Musa is lying. Lying about what? Musa told him, as Abdullah ibn Abbas said, as the ulama of the Quran said, Abdullah ibn Abbas said that Musa clearly told Fir'aun, Allah is in the heavens. Fir'aun didn't want to accept it. So he told his minister, build for me a ladder, build for me a tower. I'm going to go up there in his haughtiness and his arrogance, and I'm going to see for myself, do I see the God of Musa? Not only that, these kuffar who are walking around here, Every Christian or Muslim who used to be a Christian here, the main prayer of the Christians is the Lord's Prayer. And I only mention this just to tell you it's not acceptable for kuffar to know this and Muslims not to know. I'm not mentioning this as a delil in our religion. Those people, if you ask any Christian, practicing, not practicing, what's the Lord's Prayer? The Lord's Prayer says in the beginning, Our Father, Allah, A'udhu Billah, Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. You have a special name. Maybe they're talking about the Asma of Allah, Al-Husna, Allahu Alam. He's not our Father, but the point is, they said our Father, our God, who is in heaven. How is the Muslim now going to come and argue and debate? No, Allah is not in the heavens and he established it in only half of the ways that the Quran has mentioned to us concerning where Allah is, Ummatul Islam. This issue 
is a microcosm of a bigger, wider, greater issue. And the greater issue is we have to learn our Aqida. We have to learn our Aqida because, again, the importance of the Aqida is that Allah is going to ask you, who is your Lord? Who do you worship? Some people, their response will be, I worship Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some people will respond, the lisan of their hal. They say, will say, I don't worship anyone at all. Because the Lord that they worship, he's not above, he's not below, he's not here, he's not there. They don't know where he is because of the philo philosophical approach of trying to understand these issues. Do what the companions did. These ayat were mentioned by Allah Azza wa Jalla and the Prophet spoke about them Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions stopped. And they didn't dig into these issues to confuse themselves or to confuse the people after us. But if a person insists on being confused, he only does so to the destruction and the detriment of himself. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa nas'alallah tawfiq was said that. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillahi amma ba'd Although Allah Azza wa Jal is above the seven heavens And he's over his throne in a way that befits his majesty He nonetheless is still with us He established that in the Quran وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ He is with you wherever you go You fly a plane, he's with you Go in a submarine, he's with you You awake, he's with you If you asleep, he's with you If you go into the cave, he's with you Wallahu ma sabirin. Inna Allah ma al muttaqin. Inna Allah ma al ladin al taqo. Allah is with those who have sabr. He's with those who have a taqwa. Allah Taala mentioned the condition with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companion Abu Bakr. If yaqul li sahibihi la tahzan. Inna Allah maana. When they were in the cave and he was with his companion, he told Abu Bakr, "Don't worry. Don't be sad. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. Allah is with us. He's the third of the two. Never is there Najwa. A group of people come and they want to plot in secret. They can be three, they can be four, they can be five, more or less. Allah is with them. Allah is with the munafiqeen. Allah is with everyone. But he's with the people how? He's with the people in his ability to see from where he is. He's with the people in his ability to hear. He's with the people in his ability of the knowledge, the powerful knowledge that he has. So the Nabi, when he used to address the people, and we finished with this, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as I've done from this masjid, in the beginning of the khutbah, when he came to ashadu an la ilaha illallah, when he said, inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu. When he came to the shahada, doing the khutbah, he would raise his hand up like that. He would address the people, he would ask the people, what are you people going to say? Yawm al-qiyamah, when you die, and Allah asks you about me. They said, we bear witness you told us the truth. You informed us where Allah is. You informed us the halal and haram. You didn't leave anyone in or on haysa baysa. Everyone knows. He put his finger up again and he pointed to this side. He said, oh Allah, bear witness. And he put his finger up, oh Allah, bear witness. And those in the middle, oh Allah, bear witness. And those on the side. How is someone going to come and say Allah is everywhere? Why didn't he just say Allah, bear witness? Why didn't he do something like that? It is these types of philosophical debates and discussions. I say to the young brothers, leave the argumentative people want to make jidal, leave them alone. Make these topics because they are a large group of Muslims who don't know. But don't make these topics because we want to push back and fight those people and refute those people. Leave those people alone. Tell them, go and look for the other people from those deviant ways and you discuss these issues and debate with these issues as for me I want to be on the way I'm speaking of what you should say I want to be on the way of the people of Alul Hadith starting off with the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he asked the little girl Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam hey little girl where is Allah the little girl said over the heavens she had no philosophy no philosophical approach who am I little girl she said you're Rasulullah he told the man, free this girl. She's a believer. She's a mu'mina. The one who knows that and understands that, that's part of the aqidah of a person who has correct iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our aqidah. 
and protect the aqidah of our shabab. And may Allah Azza wa Jal don't allow us to check out of this hayat the dunya except that we know who he is, where he is, what he does, and that we know our religion and we know in detail who that man was that he sent to us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, aqimu salat, yarhamakum Allah. إله إلا الله شهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا الصلاة حيا الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله when he straightened out the lines feet to feet shoulder to shoulder look to the right and the left of the person who is next to you put your heels together don't have any children between two adults. Don't race in the salat. Wait till the people in the first row indicate to you when to go. Second, third, fourth row, look at the people in the first row who are watching the imam. Let's have some discipline in this salat the way the Nabi used to do, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another thing, when you're in sajda and you're saying, subhana rabbi al-a'la, subhana rabbi al-a'la, you have your head on the ground. And you're saying glory to Allah the Most High. Al-A'la. That's from the proofs and the dalil. That Bani Adam is going to be humble and put his head on the ground to establish the abudi of Allah. The servitude. We are slaves to Allah who is above the seven heavens over his throne. In a way that befits his majesty. استوى اعتدلوا التراسوا ولا تختلفوا فتختلف قلوبكم وسد الخلل إن تسوية الصف من إقام الصلاة الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصل النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. 
الله أكبر أعوذ بالله من الشيطان بسم الله الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين هل أتاك حديث الغاشية وجوه يومئذ خاشعة عاملة ناصبة تصلى نارا حامية تسقى من عين آنية ليس لهم طعام إلا من ضريع لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع وجوه يومئذ ناعمة لسعيها راضية في جنة عالية لا تسمع فيها لاغية فيها عين جارية فيها سرر مرفوعة وأكواب موضوعة ونمارق مصفوفة وزرابي مبثوثة أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبل كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمسيطر إلا من تولى وكفر فيعذبه الله العذاب الأكبر إن إلينا إيابهم ثم إن علينا حسابهم غربا غربا